everyone so welcome back to another video and in this video today it's gonna be my preface more than the screen uh, because I don't have code or anything to show you uh, I have a few small things but no graphic stuff uh, mostly I want to address a question that I get often right and this question is about like oh how can you make such good progress how can you be so fast how you can do that how can you do that right uh, mostly because often the person asking that frames it in a way that's kind of detrimental to themselves basically framing a way how can you be faster than me um, how, right how can you do better than me which is not true first of all uh, also because like First things I would like to say is that that happens to me all the time to me as well, right? Every time I go on Twitter, because my Twitter is pretty much only uh, graphics dev, uh, game dev pretty much, and um, they always post amazing stuff. So every, every time, like, the, the first reaction is always, oh my god, that they are godlike, right? How I would be able to be like them. But I have a few advices and tips I can give you to basically use that what other people do other people do as motivation and not has um, tampering your ambition or demotivation basically in a way um, and the first things is you need to, to realize that everybody has a different background and uh, they have been doing for a different amount of time and so on Right, so don't measure your your success, your being successful on the what you do in this case graphics, uh, based on other people metrics. Right, and let me give you an example. Um, not long ago, uh, I implemented animation, like being able to play skeletal animation in, into my engine in the X12, right, and it took me like two days. So if you see that externally, you see, oh my God, this guy did all skeleton animation, animation importing, all that kind of stuff in two days. Like I will never do that. But the thing is, it's just not true because you don't know what code am I using, what's my background and so on. Um, and I'm gonna tell you now and we realize it's really, it didn't t take me two days, but it took me months. Right, um, the code that I use, for example, for um, the animation system is almost untouched for years since my first OpenGL engine. Right, when I was still doing OpenGL, um, and you can see that on, on my Vimeo where there is the dog walking, it's pretty much the same code. Uh, so that's why integrating that into the X12 didn't take me that long. The way I export, export animation is still the same, the same code. The only thing I need to modify a little bit was uh, the matrix multiplication because it's not using GLM, uh, it was using DirectX Math, but that takes little. And I only had to, to implement how to plot the data on the GPU pretty much. And then almost the shader was exactly the same, just changed the different data types, right? So. It's not, it took me two days to do a DX12 integration, but to understand how to do animation, it took me, took me way longer, right? But if you just see a video, you might not know that. And that's why I'm saying don't look at other people's progress and compare to yours, because you have no idea, right? And another thing, for example, when I wrote that the first time, it took me less time because I worked in animation for years. Right? I started in the game and movie industry as a rigger, right? So I had to deal with animation on a daily basis. I had to deal with matrices on a daily basis. So for me, it was already more natural. If you didn't have that, you will need to learn your inner algebra first and understand that first. So it might take you longer, right? So as you can see, it really depends on your background, on the other people's background and what you're using code-wise. I'm reusing a lot of code that I wrote previously, just modifying it or readapting it, cleaning up a little bit, right? Uh, not writing it from scratch and understanding it from scratch. There is a very big difference. 
right? So don't get bogged down on that. And actually use that as an inspiration to see, okay, look at what people are doing. I want to do the same, right? Uh, this is also a topic that um, Harold Serrano, hopefully I didn't butcher your name, is something that he covers quite a bit and often on, on his channel. So he's working on his own game engine. I think it's Mac-based. I think it's OpenGL for, for a long time, pretty much as, as long as I did. Uh, he covers a lot more on the social part, motivational part, um, of the game dev, so I really recommend you follow him both on YouTube and Twitter. I'm gonna put the, the link in the description. He's really, really nice guy, really worth uh, following him. And he, he also did recently a, a Q&A uh, where he basically covered a lot of those similar questions he gets often, right? And the next thing is, I want to suggest you is really keep track of what you're doing. Right? So, for example, for me, it's easy because pretty much I, I make video often of all my progress and then go back and look back and you will see uh, how far you have come, right? So, for example, uh, this video here is one of the first uh, quality crap, but it's only 720. It's one of the first video I ever made about what well, was about OpenGL, right? And it's like five years ago, and you can see the shading was super basic. It was just uh, a grid and, and a camera moving around. The camera was also bugged, right? So that was the best of the best of shading. You see, like there are artifacts um, everywhere. It's super super basic. And if you check now, instead, uh, is there a any of the night is there is not the night here anywhere um, but you will see you will see your progress right and um, and sometimes it's not easy if you don't keep track sometimes it's hard to, to really see your progress so go back and check and you will see how far you've come right so check your old videos your old notes your old screenshot and that's gonna motivate you right and then when it comes instead to when people are asking me how much you work on your engine, um, the biggest advice I can give you is like, don't wait to have like a full day to work on it, right? It's basically like, oh, don't wait the weekend because you know you're gonna have half a day to work on it or a day to work on it, right? But we suggest if you can, try to stick to it. Like if you have 30 minutes, work on it 30 minutes, find something small, like, okay, clean up this piece of the code, implement these basic things, which is going to be the base of what else you're going to do next. Like, for example, you're working on animation, you need to export your animation, you have 30 minutes, start working in Maya writing or Blender, whatever, a script that gets you all the, all the matrices of your skeleton or all the bones, right? Then the next day you will use that to get all the matrices. Once you have all the matrices, the next day you will save them. Then the next day you will read them in your engine and so on. And if you stick to it on a daily basis or whenever you can, you will make a lot more progress instead of waiting those big bursts on a weekend, right? Um, because other, also it's gonna put you a lot more pressure because you, you're like, oh, I can only work on the weekend uh, so I need, I need to, to get something done. I need to, to do this. And then if you get stuck, uh, then you start waiting on you and everything. So if you do progress every day, it's like, okay, this evening I had this trouble. I didn't, I didn't finish what I wanted to do, but still I made progress, right? It makes, uh, it, it allows you to make a lot more progress in my experience. And uh, finally, uh, the last question is, Ask yourself um, what you want to do, like what, why are you doing it? And also again, Harold uh, covers that quite a bit, right? Uh, do you want to make a game? Do you want to make an engine or, or you want to make a game with your engine, right? Because depending on the answer, you, you need to have different goals. So if you want to make a game, and only a game, I will argue maybe you don't want to make your own engine. If you want to ship a game, you're better off going for 
Unreal, Unity, Godot, something already off the shelf, because so you can focus on your game. If you're a halfway between wanting to make an engine and a game, you want to ship something on your game, uh, on your engine, then you need to really limit the scope. So, okay, I'm only gonna target Windows. I'm only gonna target OpenGL. I'm not gonna target DirectX. It's only going to be 2D and it's going to do specific things. So you will need to cut corners. Right? You, you cannot have the most beautiful engine that does everything because it's gonna take you 10 years or more. Um, so for example, you might have a really hacky way to load scene and only works with your specific scenes, but fine, because you want to ship a game with that, right? And then maybe once you get around for the second game, you already have a base and then you can expand on that and you keep doing that, right? So your second game can be similar to the first one plus something else, right? And every time you ship a game, you, you add something else to your engine. Or if, if you are like me, that you don't care whatsoever about shipping a game, and you only care about the tech, you enjoy the tech, um, basically making a demo piece, let's say, like I want to render a pretty image with my engine, that's the only thing I care of, right? Um, and I want to try to make an engine so I can focus specifically on that, I can spend more time uh, on specific parts. For example, I spent so much time uh, in the past week working on memory allocations because I wanted to do memory allocation properly. If you were shipping a game, uh, once you know exactly what your games look like, you probably know exactly how to allocate memory specifically for that game. It might not work whatsoever for another game, but then you can work on the other game. Instead, I want to do something more general, something more useful, right? And that's why I spent so much time into that. So answer that question because then once you have the answer, you can also figure out how to measure your progress. Like in my case, I don't want to ship a game. I want to understand how to do this stuff. And so for example, uh, for a month, I had no progress, visual progress whatsoever, because I was trying to integrate a scripting language in, in my engine. And I first went with C Sharp, and then I had to debug how C Sharp worked, .NET, all the issues, open GitHub issue, and so on. And it took me forever. Uh, and then I went to Lua, then started working into Lua and a state machine integrating into the engine. So basically to get that working, it took me like a month and it visually was no progress. So I cannot measure the progress only visually because graphics is only a small part, not small part, it's a, it's a big part, but it's not the only part of the engine, right? Now that I've been doing my, my Vulkan backend, once I'm done, I will be exactly the same point I was with the X12. No visual upgrade, right? But the engine, the backend changed drastically, changed a lot. There's a lot cleaner code, a lot better abstraction, and so on, right? So don't, also don't, depending on how, what, what your target is, measure your progress accordingly, because it can only be visual. And luckily on YouTube, I mostly post visual, uh, stuff, right? Because that's what's easier to convey. Actually, the memory stuff I posted uh, last week was the first things that was more code heavy and it was not exactly visual, but it was uh, something good to share. So those are the points uh, I wanted to cover. Sorry, this video went longer than expected, but I think it's really important points. And it's stuff that I learned over the years. So I think it's useful stuff to know for people that are starting now. Um, so try to stay motivated and be inspired by other people and not um, be demoralized by other people's progress because only you know your progress, only you know your, your target. So use those effectively to be motivated. And that's exactly the same reason why I surrounded myself for good tech people, good game dev on Twitter and keep inspiring me, uh, can ask questions and so on. All right, so I hope it was useful. See you in the next video.